One day I was asked to write about Le Sylphide Ballet. Reflecting on what's one of the most famous ballets of the 20th century, I thought, why did choreographer Mikhail Fokin use precisely this music, these waltzes and mazurkas by Frédéric Chopin and not others? Why? Now I'm going to talk about Le Sylphide Ballet, staged by the Bolshoi Theater, which was slightly more frivolous in terms of style as compared to the ballet produced by Marinsky Theater. For some reason, I remember the lines from my mother's favorite old romance song that she used to sing. I don't remember all the words, but there was a line like this. The glittering pond in the valley is reflecting the deep blue sky. Then there was something about a breeze that caressed the pond and erased those beautiful reflected pictures. And then at some point, I realized that these words somehow embraced the idea of Les Elfides. A magnificent mazurka is played by the orchestra. The music accompanies the stage curtains opening, and then we, the audience, see a wonderful picture of a statuesque group of female ballet dancers reflected by the pond. And then this harmony is distorted by one of the female dancers, and it seemed as if she was erasing the previous picture with her dance. The result was beautiful. Then she erases everything. Then the harmony of the picture is restored. Generally, all waltzes in La Sylphide, while being stylistically similar, differ greatly in terms of their meaning. Take, for example, the fourth waltz. There is something from youth, I'd say from adolescence. Even the movements demonstrate many caprices. The ballerina is either running in one direction, then she no longer wants to go that way, or she's moving in another direction, and then the opposite way. And this is very common for young people whose minds are still open to many desires. Then the ballet is followed by the prelude. In the Bolshoi theater, we had a common practice when very poetic ballerinas danced the prelude. Verechka Vasilyeva, wife of Kasyan Galizovsky, the great choreographer, used to dance it magnificently. I would call this dance as searching for the ideal. A ballerina playing Silphid's role is always heading somewhere. She is looking for something. No, it's something different. Then again, no. It should be something different again. And she fails to find the ideal, and then she runs away. The third act, bright, temperamental ballerinas should dance it, like Maya Pisirskaya, Olga Lipeshinskaya. It was a gorgeous mazurka. This is the blossoming of feminine existence. By the way, I do love to play it on the piano. It's a rousing, vigorous dance full of high jumps that makes the ballerina cross the stage several times, from one end of the curtained stage to the other. This dance symbolizes feminine maturity. This is the well-known seventh waltz, danced by the ballerina and the leading dancer. It tells us about love which has yet to happen, about the anticipation of love. Partners' touches are light and delicate, no kisses at all. Therefore, for me, the seventh waltz is the image of platonic love. Yes, the platonic feelings indeed. I've danced this waltz many times. There's no love as such in this dance, either in the dance movements or in the music. What is most interesting is that I did not read about all this. This is my own view. In La Silphide, I mean the whole ballet, there is no love yet. That is why there is only one male dancer in this ballet, accompanied by multiple feminine characters. In La Silphide, there is only the premonition of love. Maybe someone would say that Fokin staged his ballet about something different, but I think this is really so. I feel it is so.